what we're going to do is just have a quick overview of the Word app that is written in React. Then we're going to introduce X element, and then we're going to get working on the X Word, which is the reverse engineering of X element and S Word, right? So, what do we know about Astro? Astro is a static site generator that focuses on basically sending zero JavaScript as well, as low, less JavaScript to the client as possible. Um, it does some fantastic things in terms of its progressive hydration when it comes to using other frameworks, especially the UI frameworks and friends, but like React, Svelte, React Solid, um, etc. And X Element is Astro's first and only web component framework that is out at the present moment that allows you to create dynamic HTML elements um, from a very simple and intuitive interface and it sends pure JavaScript down the wire to the client. There's no renders, no partial hydrations, nothing required like that. It is um, as vanilla, as close to vanilla as you can get. So that is the introduction and let's get demonstrating with the S-Bird, okay? S-Bird is, <clears throat> well, Sarah, do you want to talk about S-Bird? Sure. So S-Bird is uh, my little bird app. It uses uh, the eBird API and eBird is a, is a global bird organization where birders around the world uh, submit reports of the birds they've observed. So it's a big citizen science project. Um, this bit of the app we're looking at right now is specifically to see uh, what rare or unusual birds people have recorded in a particular area. So that's what this shows here. So I make a call and I can see sightings that, ha that are pending review. So like that Sandhill Crane, these are, these are sightings people have reported, uh, but I have them classified as pending. They haven't been reviewed yet. So if you're waiting, you're like, did they look at my bird report? That's, this is where I go to check. And then otherwise there are birds recently confirmed. So I know when my sighting was actually confirmed. And then, so down below I have other sections that, that Fuzzy's showing that are, that are other things. Um, this is a section if I want to see which birds at all have been reported in the last 30 days. Uh, things like that. Things that I use when I'm out reporting birds. Um, I want to know whether something is rare. I want to know, has anybody else seen an Icelandic gull lately in this area? You know, is that really what it is? And other things like that. So these are the kinds of things that I built for myself using React because that's what I learned. And then when I learned Astro, I could put this entire React app in an Astro page on my website. Uh, and now we're going to try to uh, see if we can get rid of the React and build the same functionality in X element. That's today's task. Yep. And um, I just want to ask a couple of questions. It's like, how did you find using Astro and a third party component like React? Like, what was your experience when you came to building this React Bird app that we were just about to explore the code for? Well, so one change I had to make uh, when I, I built the thing originally in React before I even mm -hmm. knew about Astro. Um, and so, of course, that was a single page application. So you're looking at roots, things like that. Um, so the first thing was when I came to Astro, uh, I sort of had to make some decisions about, am I going to try to repl replicate an SPA inside of an Astro page, uh, which I sort of did at first. And then I was like, mm -hmm. well, let's take advantage of Astro's routing. And so then I broke my app apart and I had different React pieces on different Astro pages. But then I would get into issues with, um, I wanted to share some state, like a default location. I wanted someone to be able to mm -hmm. set a default location. Um, and then Astro had the quite major upgrade to version 0.21. Uh, so I had to mm -hmm. rebuild the site anyway. There were a bunch of things that, that sort of <laughs> needed some fine tuning. And so at that point, I just, 
I actually threw them back all onto one page. So what you're seeing now is actually a subset of what the original app was. Um, and I decided to put them all on one page so that it was easier to share that um, that state. So that was one that was one issue. And I think we hear that a lot in the Discord, uh, trying course, to yeah. wrangle like state and context, things that you're used to um, when you basically start from an app.js file that in Astro, because everything is sort of split onto different pages naturally, um, we, we look to, you know, whether it's the, the Astro SPA plugin or Excel, like we're looking to other things mm -hmm. like that. The second mm -hmm. thing, so there were two main things. That was the first one. The second thing is, um, if you look in my code on the on the page, on the SBIRD page, for the, for the version we have here, this works. Mm -hmm. There have been some, um, some of these issues where I have had to use client uh, only equals React. So I just want to quickly say for those who are not familiar with the client load directives that Astro use, this is how Astro gets around their partial hydration. And I'm just going to bring up their epically worded pages. Their documentation is getting a lot better, I have to say. Um, thank you, Sarah. Um, just for those who don't know, Sarah is working on the docs for the Astro at the present moment. So, um, yeah. The concept of partial hydration in Astro is relatively new for what Astro is. Astro is not your single page application like Sarah's just mentioned, where everything is within a JSX file. Um, life inside a JSX file is life inside JavaScript. The frameworks give us a lot of developer experience and a lot of tooling to help um, extrapolate a lot of the stuff away and that became the norm for about pretty much a decade but with the likes of Astro coming back and the likes of these new concepts like partial hydration um, which is just a coin for of um, island architecture where the existing model is that your existing application is your site but what we what Astro does is that it takes away your interactive elements those um because one of components because approximately 80 percent of your application is static that being the static html content that react is constantly rendering along with the additional javascript functionality the reactivity as it's called so astro takes the concept of islands and um really drives this home as part of this ethos where Within this picture here is it's a brilliant picture that kind of emphasizes it. You have several small applications, whereas in the past this used to be one giant application, and React would render all of these small parts together. Whereas with Astro, it only renders out the static parts that are not ever going to really change. There's no real need for dynamism over the top of it. And the stuff that does need any dynamic components or interactions, like for instance, a sidebar or a header uh, right at the top, just to prove a point. And then, you know, we've got our little terms of condition, um, table of contents on the right hand side. So these things here are small little applications that are embedded onto the actual page itself. Um, Astro then goes one step further and makes them high, um, interactive on the client. There are several ways of doing this. Like Sarah mentioned, there is the client load, which is currently what's implemented on SBIRD at the present moment. And this loads the components when the DOM has finished and the JavaScript is ready. So at that next stage, it then starts to begin to hydrate all the static parts of your page and starts to make them interactive. Um, Idle, idle is pretty much the same thing, but this happens when the thread is free, the main thread comes free. So on your next idle callback, basically, um, visible is a very cool and extremely powerful hydration selector where it uses the intersection observer to see whether or not the element itself has became visible onto the viewport. And if it has, then it starts interaction. Likewise with the client media hydration query, 
this is I like to see more people utilize this um, because this allows you to react when certain things change on the page so if on certain viewports on view, certain view sizes you could have certain islands that become different and start to do different things right because you could only hydrate that interactivity on a given query and then if all else fails and you're struggling with getting your UI framework to work it's normally because a lot of the UI frameworks have hooks that require access to the DOM straight away um, UI a lot of the for instance react plugin ecosystem is built around the react model this assumes that when react loads that the document is there etc so there is no pre-concept of islands or multi-page architecture when it comes to a lot of the react ecosystem partly because astro is very new and a lot of this concept is yet to take on board but astro provides you with step-ins to get around those gotchas and client only is a very good one if you're struggling with your with your application regardless of what framework it is try the client only um and a typical question we normally get spoke uh, heard in the community channels especially for those new to astro is that you can't hydrate a natural component and this page um i highly recommend checking it out the partial hydration page on the astro docs it explains it well because astro components are html components and really there is no server runtime um they're straight up html so a string of html um and like it says here in order for you to make it interactive you're going to need to convert it into a framework of your choice and there is also a case where like me you don't like these frameworks now this is where i'm going to introduce x element um because personally speaking when i came into astroland i was happy with the fact that i didn't need to write a lot of my page in a jsx file so the less reactive I could get my site to be, the happier me as a developer I am. Um, and that's just my own preference. And that's what inspired X Element to basically come into fruition. Me and an excellent um, maintainer and contributor to the community, Jonathan Neal, we got together and we basically came up with a way that we could incorporate X Element into Astro to allow you to have that client side runtime and interactivity and deliver it without the use of having a UI framework as in effect a middleman in this case. Um, there is a lot of scope for UI frameworks within Astro. It, it really does empower Astro to create fantastic, fantastic experiences. However, um, for those who just don't like using UI frameworks, there is something else out there now. And um, before this, in Astro, if you wanted to use any sort of client-side interactivity, you would use a good old-fashioned script tag, right? Where it would be placed and bundled using Astro's magic um, and attached to the page, right? There's no need for any client-side hydration with this because it literally just fires once the script is ready. And this inspired X Element to take this one step further because as you can see here, um, let me see if I can zoom in, just to show this point. There's a H1 heading element along with a button. Now this button, we wanted to give it a wee action on it. We just want it, when it clicks, we just want to change the text from not clicked to say clicked, right? Now, the, the, the standard approach would be to just go script, document query selector, stick an add event listener onto it, specify the, the, the event listener, and then we're targeting the H1, we're getting the inner text, and then we're just changing that to click. It is a bit verbose, especially as a developer when you're constantly having to do this for over more than one component. And X element is where it came in 
So we've yeah. So this is um, we've actually got a page. Sarah's actually set up a wee page for us, right, to demonstrate some X element components. Thank you, Sarah. Um, now this is all components using JavaScript on the client side, created within Astro without using any UI framework. Um, let's break this out a wee bit. This one here, as you probably noticed, right, our little right type in text is a third party script that we can call it, called type it, which is basically just takes a, a string and just prints it out on the screen as if it's been typed. Quite cool, really is. Um, we've also got your, well, the everyone's counter, where we just increase the count and decrease the count. Ah, I do apologize about this, right? It's just a glitch on GitHub, uh, GitPod, sorry. So yeah, we've got the counter and we've got a flashy little animation going on here, right? Where actually we've got a couple of animations. Ah, and we had a surprise and I ruined it like Paul was. Hey, we try it again. Um, so this text, right, is designed to move to the right after a certain period. And this is all using the Web Animation API. The Web Animation API is actually incorporated into X element to make this whole thing a lot easier for you. And if we do click this text, we get confetti. And it only fires once, if you notice, right? So you can control event behavior, um, propagation and the likes to give you that fine grained control over your, um, your elements interactions. And this one here is a favorite one. Start, stop, control, animation, and play states. At the bottom, we have um, a request animation um, frame going on here, which is just basically updating the time every millisecond. So every 60 frames per second, this thing is going off quite nicely. And none of these are interfering with each other. So for instance, if one was to break, this would still keep firing. Next up, we're going to be asking for data from Jason's typey code, placey hole, typey code thingy me jiggy. Right, anyways, that thing, right? So here we're just doing a suspenseful data action where we just have a loading. And depending on how quick your internet speed is and connection, and if you can see that, there is a little loading state there, right? Let's just do this for a game. Click the data, loading, brought back the data. Now this is a client side fetch request that is going off. And then we're just populating the DOM once we get the data. And all of this all works at native JavaScript speed. So in terms of performance, XA element kind of tripped into being something very quick. And we have Astro to thank for that. Right, now, that is the introduction. Let's get cracking, eh? What do you think, Sarah? Yeah, let's do it.